Today we're going to talk about section 14.7, which involves polyprotic acids. So a polyprotic acid is an acid with or more than one acidic hydrogen, and it always dissociates or breaks apart in a stepwise manner. So what this means is if we have H2CO3, you can see that it's polyprotic because of the two hydrogens. Um, and that is breaking down into H plus and HCO3 minus 1. Um, and that gives a Ka1 value of 4.3 times 10 to the negative 7. So then the next step is to take this now weaker acid and break it down again. So we're taking the H off and producing CO3 2 minus, and that has a separate Ka value. You can also see that it's much smaller than the initial or the first Ka value. So in general, Ka1 is always going to be greater than Ka2, and if we have a third step, it, K2 is going to be greater than that Ka value. So the acid in each step is going to be a weaker acid. So let's look at a few examples. So we want to calculate the pH of a 5 molar H3PO4 solution and then the equilibrium concentrations of all the other species. So H3PO4, H2PO4 1 minus, HPO4 2 minus, and PO4 3 minus. So the first thing we want to do is find the major species. Well, this is not a strong acid. So our major species are H3PO4 and water. And um, from a table in the book, we know that Ka1 is our largest, and we also know that in general, and so that's going to be the dominant species. Ka1 for H3PO4 is equal to 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3, whereas our Kw value we know is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So this tells us that H3PO4 is going to be our dominant H plus contributor. So if we write the equation for that, we have H3PO4 for the first step. Remove an H plus, and we get H2, whoops, P, O4, minus. And that um, Ka expression can then be written as H plus times H2PO4 minus over H3PO4, and that is the Ka1 value. So now let's set up an ICE table. So initially it says we have 5 molar. We have no H plus and no H2PO4 because this is not a strong acid. So our change is minus X plus X plus X. So for equilibrium we get 5 minus X, X, and X. So substituting those values into our Ka, our H plus is X, our H2PO4 is X, and our H3PO4 is 5 minus X. We're going to make the assumption that 5 minus X is approximately equal to just 5, saying that the X is relatively small. And so if we solve for that, meaning that our Ka is our 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3, we get a k value of 1.9 times 10 to the negative 1. This is less than 5% of 5, so our assumption checks. Okay, so now let's figure out all these equilibrium concentrations. So we know that our x is equal to 1.9 times 10 to the negative 1. We can also write that as 0.19. And so this is equal to our H plus concentration, and this is also equal to our H2PO4 minus concentration. Okay, so now we've got that H3PO4 is equal to 5. We know our H2PO4 minus is equal to 0 0.19, so let's find the rest. So if we look at the Next step, which is to take our H2PO4 minus and dissociate that, we get H plus and HPO4 2 minus. And the Ka2, because this is step 2, value is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. This is equal to H plus, HPO4 2 minus, divided by H. 2PO4 minus. Okay, we already know H2PO4 and H plus, so we can say 6.2 times 10 and negative 8 is equal to our H plus, which is 0 
You don't know HPO4 2 minus, that's what we're solving for. And we know H2PO4 is 0 0.19. So basically these will end up canceling. So we get the, the concentration of HPO4 2 minus is equal to 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. So let's just put that up here so that we can keep track. Hey, we still need to solve for PO4 3 minus. So if we write the equation for that, we've got our H. PO4 2 minus H plus plus PO4 3 minus. Well, this is Ka sub 3, and that value is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 13. That is equal to H plus PO4 3 minus and HPO4 2 minus. Okay, well, we know. H plus is 0 0.19. We're solving for PO4 3 minus. And we know HPO4 2 minus is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. So if we do some math, we get that the concentration of PO4 3 minus equals 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And there's all of our equilibrium concentrations. So you can see that as we did each step, our concentration gets smaller and smaller, weaker and weaker acid. All right, let's look at something that is not a weak acid. So let's say that we want to calculate the pH of a one molar H2SO4 solution. Well, H2SO4 is a strong acid, so that means our major species are going to be H plus, HSO4 minus, because it's already dissociated one step, because it's a strong acid, and H2O. So we know that the concentration of the H plus is at least one molar because it's a strong acid and it will completely dissociate. And so what we're trying to find out is does this HSO4 contribute enough H plus to affect the pH? So we're going to look at that part to see if the H plus ions that it produces is enough to make a difference. And if we use a table in the book, this would be Ka2 because it's the second step. Um, is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. And then this is equal to our H plus, our SO4 2 minus, divided by our HSO4. Okay, so if we make an ICE table, we know that we are starting with 1 molar of the HSO4, because if the H2SO4 breaks completely apart, into these two, you know we have one molar of each, so that also means we have one molar of the H plus, no SO4. So this is going to be minus X plus X plus X. So we have one minus X, one plus X, and X. So if we substitute that in, we get one plus X times X divided by one minus X. If we do our approximation, we get that this is 1 times x over 1. So that gives us that 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2 equals x. And so this uh, approximation checks out. 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2 is less than 5% of 1. So we are all set there. So that means that our H plus concentration is equal to our initial 1 plus 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. Well, if we go based on significant figures, that's equal to 1, so we can see that, that um, the dissociation of HSO4 did not affect our pH at all. So if we want to find pH, this is equal to the negative log of H+, plus, which is equal to the negative log of 1, which equals 0, 0 pH. Let's look at a third example where we have a smaller concentration of our strong acid. Our major species are still H plus, HSO4, 1 minus, and water. Okay, so again, we're going to look and see if the concentration of the H plus from the HSO4 is enough to contribute to the pH. So we're going to start out the same way we did with example 2. Okay, we know that our Ka2 is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. We know that's H plus. So 4, HSO4, 
Now, according to our ICE, we now have 0 0.01 molar. Same with H plus, since it's since H2SO4 is our starting acid, 0SO4 to minus minus X plus X plus X, 0 0.01 minus X, 0 0.01 plus X, X. Substitute those values in, we get 0 0.01 plus X for our H plus. SO4 to minus is X. HSO4 minus is 0 0.01 minus X. If we make our assumptions, this is 0 0.1 times x over 0 0.01. That gives us an x value of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2, which is also the same thing as 0 0.012. Now, here's our problem. This is greater than what we said was our initial concentration on 0 0.01. That's not going to work. Nope. So we need to use the quadratic formula instead. Yay! So, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now, I'm not going to go through all the algebra, because I know you guys can do that. But if you take our initial equation here, this equals 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. Multiply the bottom. You know, multiply all of your x's through. Get your equation into the form of x squared plus 2.2 times 10 to the negative 2x minus 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4 equals 0. You have your a, you have your b, and you have your c. You can plug in and get an x value of 4.5 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay. Um, another value that you get is negative, so obviously that one's not going to work. And so then you can calculate your h plus as 0 0.01 plus 4.5 times 10 to the negative 3. So that gives us 0 0.0145. We want the pH of that. Negative log of that concentration, and that gives us 1.84. So as you can see, in this case, the second step of the dissociation actually contributed almost half of the concentration Whereas in example two, when we had a high concentration of the strong acid, that second dissociation step didn't really have an effect. So in general, uh, successive Ka values are usually much smaller than the first, so that only the first dissociation step makes a significant contribution to the equilibrium concentration. We saw that in step um, in example one and example two. Calculation of the pH for a weak polyprotic acid is the same as the calculation for a weak monoprotic because we break it into steps. Um, although when we're looking at a strong polyprotic acid like sulfuric acid, if it's highly concentrated, the first dissociation step is going to basically repress that second step. It didn't have an effect at all. But if the strong acid was dilute, then the second step made a significant contribution and we had to use the quadratic equation to solve for H+. So here are some pumps to get working on and we'll uh, talk about this more in class. Have a good day.